Hello friends, I'm Dr. Anko. Welcome to BLK Pediatric Practice. Today, I will be discussing about neonatal resuscitations in cases of COVID suspect and positive mother. Although it is unclear that baby born to COVID positive mother is infectious or not, if you look at the systematic reviews published recently, they found that the risk of preterm delivery is in the range of 20 to 40%, and mainly they are of late preterm, that is 34 to 36 weeks. However, when the amniotic fluid, placenta, and cord blood samples were done for RT-PCR, most of the time they were negative. That means the risk of vertical transmission, even if it is there, it is very, very low. What I am going to discuss about that, what is the basic and main differences from the other standard neonatal resuscitation guideline based on NNF, National Neurology of Forum. So before delivery, in all the cases, we would always ask for few things in the cases of COVID positivity. What is the COVID status, whether the mother is suspected, or COVID positive. On that basis, we have to do antenatal counseling regarding that we should always give a positive counseling after two or three months of this COVID uh, status. We found that most of the time, baby did not require any active resuscitation like in the other cases of resuscitation. We know that the 90% generally don't require active resuscitations. And uh, we, we, we should always ask these four questions. What is the gestational age, amniotic fluid, multiple pregnancy, additional risk factor. And on that basis, we, we prepare our team and do team briefing. And always we do a quick equipment checkup beforehand. And that equipment checkup would be based on temperature, airway, breathing, circulation, and drug. We all know about it. The only thing different is that we have to use full hazmat suit, the PPE. Regarding preparations, the ideally we would require a two separate room, one negative pressure operation theater and one resuscitation area. That means if the baby is delivered at OT and someone would carry the baby and shift to the other room in the resuscitation area to avoid any exposure to the healthcare worker from aerosol genetic procedure. It it, if it is being done for the mother. So that means the mother is the main source for infection, not the baby. We should have a minimum number of healthcare workers regarding resuscitations and probably one or two would be enough. And that person should be well expert in doing intubations in any advanced resuscitations. And if the two separate rooms are not available, like in most of the time in our cases, the, the space between the mother and baby should be around two meter and six feet away. So as the standard NRP guideline in the India, we follow that, we ask only one question, whether the baby is breathing or crying. If the baby is breathing and crying immediately after birth, we should follow the routine care. That means start skin to skin contact immediately and delay cord clamping up to 60 seconds. If the baby did not cry after birth, we should not do delayed cord clamping and baby should be resuscitated under warmer care following initial steps. In some of the cases, if the baby would require suctioning, then we should keep our face away because it's an aerosol generating procedure. The recommendation is that we should not do unnecessary frequent suctioning of the mouth. We also know that 3% of the baby would, would require positive pressure ventilations. Here, it's an aerosol generating procedures. So there are high chances of aerosol coming in from the uh, mouth area. So we should keep the mask self well uh, and avoid any leakage from the mask area. The dispersion of aerosol is in the range of one to two centimeter, while in the adult, it is in the range of 30 to 90 centimeter. That means the risk of infection transmission is very, very less. We all know that the baby born to the COVID positive mother requiring resuscitation is not on the basis of COVID positivity. COVID positivity, but because the chances of preterm delivery is high in the range of 20 to 40%. And in some of the cases, mom is having ARDS and hypoxic, though baby can born 
with a limp status. We know that the, to know the effective ventilations, heart rate monitoring is most important. And as per the end of guideline, the best reliable and the fastest method for heart rate monitoring is auscultations. But while using hazmat suit, we know that it is very difficult to put this stethoscope over the ear. So probably if it is not feasible, we can continue starting heart rate monitoring using palpation method and cord. And meanwhile, one of the staff can attest the pulse oximeter to know the further need for oxygen. Samdham baby would also require intubation and it is a one of the most important aerosol generating procedures. So there is some suggestion that while giving positive pressure ventilation, we can attach HEPA filter, but there is a risk if you are using HEPA filter, we know the dead space is in the range of 13 to 30 ml. So if the dead space is so high, the risk of CO2 retention would be high. And we know that the hypercarbia can lead to brain damage, especially in the preterm infants. That is why one of the more suggestion is that we should use microcough endotracheal tube in a late preterm and term infant. If the weight is in and around three kg, we to avoid aerosol generating aerosol transmission to the healthcare worker. And if we're using micro cuff ET tube, we should keep the cuff pressure in the range of 10 to 15 centimeter of water using one to 1.5 ml of air. To conclude, during the routine care, we should follow skin to skin contact and delayed cord clamping. There is no aerosol generating procedure. While in the initial steps, because we some of the preterm would require suctioning, we should avoid repeated and unnecessary suctioning. In cases of meconium also, we should avoid unnecessary suctioning. We know that the positive pressure ventilation is again an aerosol generating procedure. We have to keep the um, mask properly fit and avoid any leakage from the area because the dispersion of aerosol can happen and it can go up to one to two centimeters from the patient's area. Intubation is again a very important and it is the most important aerosol generating procedure. So the suggestion is that we should use micro cuff PT tube provided the baby is late preterm or term because we don't have micro cuff ET2 for preterm infants. Chest compressions is a not an aerosol generating procedure. While giving medication, some of the baby would also require uh, adrenaline. So the suggestion is that we should avoid um, a repeated uh, disconnection from the bag and mask. And we should consider giving adrenaline through umbilical venous route rather than endotracheal tube. Thank you, friends.